Okay, here's how we work this problem now. Let's read the problem so we can fill out this table. Your town's intergenerational orchestra is planning their holiday concert, including room rental, advertisements, and refreshments. They have spent $500. Their treasurer records negative 500 as the total of their account. The orchestra plans to charge each person $5 to attend the concert. Taking this information, let's fill out the first two rows of this table. And the first column is about the number of people who attended the concert. Since we are counting people, that's why our unit is people. Now, the balance in the orchestra account is, uh, we're talking about money, and we count money in dollars. Okay. Now, let's go to the expression row. And the expression row means we need, I need to write uh, uh, something using variables. Now, because we are counting people and we're not sure how many people are attending the concert, I'm going to use the variable x to represent the number of people attending the concert. Now, how do I know how much money is in the account based on the number of people? Well, that's when I read the problem. And I know the account started with a negative balance of $500. However, each ticket they sell, okay, they're going to get in $5. So that's why, in addition, they're going to get $5 for every person that comes in. That's what 5x means. Now let's answer the question number one. So we're going to fill in, we're going to put the number of people who attended in question one based on what is stated in question one. It says, what will the total of the orchestra account be if 25 people attended a concert? Well, we're talking about 25 people go there who are attending the concert. The computer automatically will put this amount, negative 375. How do they figure that out? Because they did the following. They are replacing the x with 25. So they did 25 times 5. That's what 5 times x means. And that gives me 125, and I'm going to add $500, but negative, because that's a negative balance. And that's how you get negative 375. Let's go to the next question. Okay. Now they're asking how much will be in the account if 100 people are there. And you can see there's $0. Again, how do they get $0? They did 5 times 100. That's 500. But there was already a negative balance of $500 in the account. So negative $500 plus $500, that's how you get zero. The next question is asking, based upon the number of people who attended the concert last year, the orchestra treasurer estimates that the account will have $700, $750 after the concert. How many people is the treasurer estimating will attend the concert? So in this question, they didn't give me the number of people. They gave me how much money is in the account after a certain number of people attended the concert. Okay. Now, how do we figure out the number of people who attended the concert so it leave uh, the orchestra account with $750? Well, we have to use the calculator again, and this is what they did. $750 is how much money is in the account. And in the account, this amount of money is represented by this expression. Okay, so it's in, it's in a way like solving an equation. Let me show you. So like I was saying, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this expression and we're going to create an equation. So we're going to take this expression we're going to equal it to 750. That's what you see here. See, where did I get this? That is from the expression, okay, here. Where did I get 750? That's what's given in question 3. Okay, and what we're going to do now is we're going to solve this equation. Well, first thing is I want to get rid of this minus $500. That's why you're going to be adding $500 on both sides. Okay, this is solving equation, a skill we already practiced previously. Okay, negative 500 plus 500 is gone, that's zero. I have left 5x equal, and then I add these two, and I'm going to get 1250. And then, since I want to solve for x, x means the number of people who attended the concert and pay $5. So how many people, if they pay $5, must attend the concert so I get $1,250? Well, I'm going to have to divide each side by 5 because this 5 is multiplying the x. And that's how I get that x is equal to 250. Okay, And that's what I'm going to type here in 
the question three in the first column 250 people okay now let's go to the fourth question it was a it's a similar question as question number three however this time they say there's only six hundred dollars left in the account okay now why I put six hundred dollars on in the second column because the second column is about the amount of money left in the account okay now I need to find out how many people uh, I attended the concert so there were there is six hundred dollars left in the account I'm gonna have to do the same thing I did did I did previously I'm gonna take this expression and equal it to six hundred and I'm gonna with that I'm gonna create an equation and solve the equation for X and that's how I get 220 now let's start plotting okay and when we start plotting look what happened when I click plot number one it says that my uh, scale okay my maximum and my minimum scales in other words on the x-axis are not uh, adequate to plot this point why because if you look at the x-axis the biggest number I have here is 10 but right now my point start with an x of 25 so I don't have 25 here in my x-axis so that's what I'm gonna fix I'm gonna fix it so I'm gonna change the upper bound okay or the maximum bound of the x-axis and because I need a number uh, high enough so all these x values are in the graph so I can see here my smallest one right now is 25 and then the next one is 100 250 220 so this means that my biggest number is 250 for the x so I need to have two, the number 250 in my x axis so I need to fix the scale so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick a high number in uh, high enough so all these values are there I'm gonna pick 300 okay now look what happened look how the background of the graph look like there's a lot of uh, horizontal lines too many okay and it's because it has to do with the way I'm counting if you look on the X axis I'm counting by 13 that's not a good way okay so what I do is I start playing with the numbers okay um, it's like, like a guess and check method uh, my highest number is 25 my smallest number is 0 so if I count by 10 let's see how it does it look oh that looks a lot better okay but in fact I want to count by 25 because higher the higher the number you count by the X interval uh, more uh, more clearer it will be the graph hey that looks a lot better alright now let's do the same thing with uh, the y-axis. See, with that y-axis, I have a problem. The smallest number I have is negative 375, and the highest number is 750. Right now, my y-axis, the smallest number is 0, and the highest is 10. Let me fix the highest value, the upper bound. If the highest one is 750 in the table, I'm going to choose a number that is high enough, bigger enough, so 750 is there. I'm going to pick 1,000. And that looks good. However, when I pick a thousand, look what happened with my, with my the background on my graph. It's gray because there's a lot of lines, horizontal lines, uh, in the graph that is uh, covering the whole background of this graph. And the reason is because my y interval, I'm counting by one. I don't want to count by one. That's too small. That's why you see a gray background there. Okay, so I'm gonna count by a hundred, and that will help me. Uh, see the graph a lot better very good so look it looks a lot better now I told you that I cho I started with the upper bound I put a thousand so I make sure that 750 is in my graph now I need uh, to fix the lower bound because I have negative 375 so I need to choose a number uh, small enough so when I put this value on the graph it's there so I'm gonna say negative 500 okay and there it is and you can see now that my graph um, is pretty good enough to plot all these points all these values we have here all these order pairs so let's plot the first one okay the first one is 25 negative 375 so let's look for 25 in the x-axis there it is and let's find negative 375 negative 375 is between negative 300 and 400 there it is now let's plot the next one point two let's look for a hundred on the x-axis here it is and the y is zero so I leave it right there and then the next point is 250 three, seven, uh, 750 so let's look for 250 here is 250 and now let's find in the y-axis 750 750 is between 700 and 800 there it is 
And finally, point 0.4 is 220 for the x, 600 for the y. So let's look for 220 on the x. Now that will be between 200 and 225. And then I'm going to go up to all the way to 600. So it will be somewhere there. Whoops, and I put it, I seem that I put it in the wrong place. Uh, I want 220. So I need to keep moving. There it is. Okay. So I was trying to put it like in between, right in the middle between 200 and 225, but it was not accepting it because 220 is a lot closer to 225 than to 200. And now I'm ready to draw the line. And that's how you do this problem. I hope this helps.